everyone in this video we are discussing exercise 62 of ncert mathematics textbook of class 9 that is second exercise of sixth chapter lines and angles let's go through the question in figure 622 28 find the values of x and y and then show that ab is parallel to cd so here we can we have a figure and we have to show that this line segment line ab is parallel with the cd and the transversal also given and this transversal is making two angles uh, which is named as which are named as x and y so that we have to find the values of x and y here two measurements are already given this is 50 degree and 130 degree so there are different ways you can solve this question you can find the answer in different ways for example this y is vertically opposite with this 130 degree so their measurement is same so directly you can write mass you can write y is equal to 130 degree the reason is it is vertically opposite vertically opposite with vertically opposite with 130 degree that's why the angle y also have measurement 130 degree here this is 50 degree so the remaining is x so this x degree and 50 degree are linear pairs since it is 50 degree the x can be calculated as x is equal to 180 minus 50 degree because the reason is they are linear pairs so the measurement of x you will get to 130 degree and then you can take the vertically opposite angle of x and you can take this as 130 degree either by taking the linear pair with this 50 degree or by taking the vertically opposite angle of this x uh, anyway you will get 130 degree here here using the vertically opposite angle by taking this y as a vertically opposite angle of this 130 degree you will you can uh, write this as 130 degree so that Uh, corresponding angles have same measurement so that you can conclude that ab is parallel with the cd now listen to question number 2 in question number 2 it is given that in figure 629 if ab is parallel with cd and cd is parallel with ef and y is to z is equal to 3 is to 7 find x we have to find the value of x and uh, the ratio between y and z is given as 3 is to 7 so value between y uh, the ratio between y and z is given as 3 is to 7 let's uh, write that y is to z is equal to 3 is to 7 this is given then we can uh, we can try to find any relation between these angles given here so once the uh, lines the uh, relation between lines is given as ab is parallel with cd and cd is parallel with ef that means this first line is parallel with the second line and the second line is parallel with the third line so we have a property that if a line is parallel with another two lines and then other both lines will also will be parallel each other that means here cd is parallel with ab as well as ef you can see from the relation here the cd is parallel with both ab and ef so that ab and ef also will be parallel each other so here ab and ef also will be parallel each other so from the relation given we can write the we can write ab is parallel with cd and cd is parallel with ef this two results together give another result ab is parallel with ef so ab and ef are parallel so the first line and the third line are parallel so you can see that x and z are alternate interior angles so interior angles in you know, opposite sides so they are alternate interior angles they have same measurement so from here you can arrive at next result x is equal with z x is equal with z then another thing uh, how to find the measurement of x that we are thinking x is how related with y we can think next how x is related with y they are interior angles on same side so that we can write that x plus y is equal to 180 degree 
So interior angles on same side will be supplementary. Since AB and CD are parallel as given in the question, uh, interior angles on same side are X and Y, they will be supplementary. So X plus Y is equal to 180 degree. Then another thing we already have uh, found is that X is equal with Z. So this X we can replace with Z. So we can rewrite this equation as Z plus Y is equal to 180 degree. Now there is a ratio is given with Y and Z. Here the ratio is written Y and Z is related with the ratio 3 is to 7. So that we can find the value of Y and Z each. For that we want to find the value of X. So value of X is same as value of Z. So that we can find the value of Z. So Z is actually the ratio in this ratio the number representing Z is 7. 3 is the number representing the part of Y. So 7 is a number representing part of Z. So Z is equal to 7 out of the 7 plus 3 you will get the total part in the ratio is 3 plus 7. So that is 10. So 7 by 10 of this total 180 degree. So 7 by 10 into 180 you will get you can cancel the zero each other then you can multiply 7 into 18 you will get the answer. 126 degree that is a uh, measurement of the angle z so you will get the measurement of angle z so that is same as the measurement of x so since z is equal to x z is equal to x you can write x is also equal to 126 degree then if you want to find y you can just subtract you can just subtract this value from 100, uh, 180. So 180 minus 126, you will get the value of y also, but it is not asked in the question. If it is asked, you can find it so. Now listen to question number three. In figure 630, if AB is parallel with the CD and EF is perpendicular with the CD and angle GED is equal to 126 degree, find angle AGE angle GEF, angle FGE. So uh, the relation between two line segments, two line segments are given here and measurement of one angle also given. So you have to find the measurement of few angles, three angles. So first given, AB is parallel with the CD. Okay, then EF is perpendicular with CD. So the baseline CD and EF is perpendicular. That means there is 90 degree angle is made between these two lines then GED is 126 degree so the given measurement is 126 degree that is GED means this angle this angle have measurement 126 degree then we have to find AGE angle AGE we have to find so the angle to be find uh, I will mark in red color this is angle AGE then angle GEF means this angle we have to find then angle fge this is angle fge this angle also we have to find then how to find all these angles angle age angle gef and angle fge these three angles so here it is already given that this much is 126 degree so given thing is angle G E D is equal to 126 degree. From the figure, it is clear that the angle G E D is the sum of angle F E D and these two angles. So the sum of angle F E D and angle G E F. So you can rewrite this as angle F E D plus angle F uh, E G. So that is actually equal to 126 degree. Then here we know angle F E D is equal to 90 degree. So this angle have measurement 90 degree because E F and C D are perpendicular that is given. That means these two lines are making 90 degree angle 
between them so this angle is 90 degree so 90 degree or 90 plus angle feg you are getting 126 degree so to find feg you have to subtract to find angle feg you are subtracting 126 minus 90 you will get 36 degree so 36 degree is the measurement of feg feg and gef are same so we get a first one answer angle gef is equal to 36 degree which is same as feg next we have to find angle age so since the lines ab and cd are parallel next we are finding angle age since the lines ab and cd are parallel ab is parallel with cd that is given in the question we know angle uh, angle age is equal with angle g e d and angle g e d is given as 126 degree so angle a g e also is equal to 126 degree the reason you can uh, said to be this since these two lines are parallel so by the uh, alternate interior angles are same for parallel lines so since they are alternate interior angles alternate interior angles since they have same measure so that they have same measurements next we have to find the measurement of angle fge we have to find the measurement of angle fge since there we uh, we can find the measurement of fge in different ways since we have already seen the measurement of angle age as 126 degree then angle FGE and angle AGE are linear pair. So you can write angle AGE plus angle FGE has how some 180 degree. So 126 plus angle FGE is equal to 180 degree. So that you can write angle FGE is equal to 180 minus 126 so that you will get 54 degree 180 minus 126 you will get 50 degree as angle fge that is 54 degree now we can come through question number four in figure 631 if pq is parallel with ST this PQ line segment PQ and ST are parallel then angle PQR is equal to 110 degree and RST angle RST is 130 degree find angle QRS you have to find angle QRS so how to find we are thinking okay here a hint also given draw a line parallel to ST through point R this is a figure we have and we have to find the measurement of angle QRS. This is the angle we have to calculate. And uh, as per the hint given in the question, we can draw a line pass uh, line passing through R and parallel to ST. So the line will be look like this. A line will be look like this, and this must passing through R and parallel to uh, ST. So, uh, from the question, it is given that ST is parallel with PQ. And we have drawn this new line, let it be AB. This line segment AB is parallel with ST. So, AB is parallel with ST and ST is parallel with the PQ. So, from this, we can conclude that PQ also will be parallel with AB. So this is a result we have. So using this result and considering this PQ and AB of a pair of parallel lines, then what we can conclude? 
the angle PQR and angle QRB are alternate interior angles. So, angle PQR is equal to angle QRB is equal to 110 degree because the reason is they are alternate interior angles. So, here the 100 degree angle is this one. This is angle having measurement 110 degree. Next, since this is 130 degree, here also the alternate interior angle have 130 degree, but we can find the measurement of this interior angle on same side. That means the measurement of this angle. So the angle SRB. So the angle SRB angle this angle S will be supplementary. So angle S in the point S we are considering only one angle. That's why I am writing angle S. Angle S plus angle SRT. SRB sorry SRB will have the sum 180 degree because they are supplementary and they are uh, interior angles on same side. So the measurement will be SRB uh, angle S is already given this is 130 degree. So you can find the angle measurement of angle SRB by subtracting from 180 degree minus 130 degree you will get a 50 degree so the measurement here i have marked in green color that is 50 degree so the uh, angle which we want to find is the angle marked in red color that is the difference between 110 and 50 degree so the total is 110 this much is 50 so the red color will be the balance of uh, 50 from 110 so you will get the measurement of angle uh, it's angle QRS. Angle QRS is equal to 110 minus 50 degree. You will get 60 degree. So 60 degree is the measurement of this angle. That is 60 degree. There is another way also to find the same thing. For example, let me draw the same line here. I am drawing the parallel line here. And... Uh, making this passing through R and I am considering uh, the complementary angles here let it be AB then considering this as the uh, supplement of this 110 so that this angle will have measurement 70 degree when it will have measurement 70 degree since this is 130 uh, this also will be 130 because they were alternate interior angles so the remaining part will be the measurement of angle qrs so the angle qrs means this much so that is a difference between 70 and 130 so angle qrs is also we can calculate as qrs is equal to 130 degree minus 70 degree that also you will get a 60 degree so that you can find the same answer in different ways your answer will be right if your logic is correct. Now let's go through question number 5. In figure 632, if AB is parallel with the CD and angle APQ is equal to 50 degree and angle PRD is equal to 127 degree, find X and Y. So here the parallel lines are AB and CD. And angle APQ is given here that is 50 degree. Here, line AB and CD are parallel. Angle APQ is equal to 50 degree. And angle PRD is given as 127 degree. We have to find the measurement of X as well as Y. So, uh, you can see this line AB and CD are parallel. So, you can take this line PR and PQ both as transversal. So, this... 50 degree angle and this X are alternate interior angles. So simply you can write the measurement of X is equal to 50 degree and you can give the reason they are alternate interior angles. So it is remain to find the measurement of Y. We can find the measurement of Y in many ways. 
okay if it is 127 the angle p or d is 127 that means the measurement of angle r p a also 127 angle r p a is also equal to 127 the reason is same that also alternate interior angle then this angle rpa this actually angle rpa is the sum of this y degree and 50 degree so this y plus this 50 you are getting the measurement of rpa so that is equal to 127 degree so that you will get y is equal to 127 minus 50 so that is 77 degree there is another way also to find here it is 127 this prd is 127 so linear pair with the prd is prq that you can find by subtracting 127 from 180 180 minus 127 you will get 53 degree since this is 53 degree and since it is 50 degree so that we want the sum here to be 180 so all the angles inside a triangle all the interior angles sum of all interior angles in a triangle has to be 180 you, you can use that result and you can find 50 plus 53 plus y is equal to 180 so that y is equal to 50 plus 180 minus 50 plus 53 that is 180 minus 103 so that you will get answer 77 that's another way to solve the same. Now listen to next question. This is question number six. In figure 633, 33rd figure of sixth chapter, PQ and RS are two mirrors placed parallel to each other. An incident ray AB strikes the mirror PQ at B. The reflected ray moves along the path BC and strikes the mirror RS at C and again reflects back to CD. So that going along CD, prove that AB is parallel to CD. So this uh, incident ray and reflected ray CD, we have to prove they are parallel. So given thing is the mirrors are parallel. Then we have to prove the rays incident and the ray reflected will be parallel. For solving this problem, we have a result that for light rays, there is a property that is angle of incidence will same as angle of reflection actually angle of incidence and angle of reflection is measured uh, with respect to the normal of the surface of reflection that means here the normal means there is a perpendicular line to the surface at which the light ray is reflecting so this is a normal here since our surface is a straight line or that is a glass we can consider that as a straight line uh, and here actually the angle of incidence as well as angle of reflections are uh, taken like this and their measurement will be same so using the same logic and also our surface is a straight line we can consider the two angles which will be same are here this one and this one so that we can give the name abp angle abp let angle abp be x then angle cbq also will become x the reason is angle of incidence and angle of reflection is same for a light ray due to the same reason we can see that at the point c also the same reflection is happening so here also angle of incidence is this angle that we can take as y and this is angle of reflection so angle of reflection and angle of incidence both are same for a light ray so that we can take that also as y so both are y now here both are x also we already know pq is parallel with rs so using this result we can see that this light ray reflected light ray from b and incidenting light ray at c is a straight line that is bc also that is a transversal so by considering this transversal we can see x and y are alternate interior angles so you can see 
because of this result x is equal with y and the reason is they are alternate interior angle pq is parallel with rs and x and y are alternate interior angle with respect to the transversal bc so that we can see that angle aby angle aby is 180 minus 2x because x plus x you will get a 2x and this angle pba angle abc angle and angle cbq all these angle together you will get 180 because these all angles together are supplementary so the remaining angle abc from this linear pairs you are getting the measurement 180 minus 2x same way you will get the measurement here is 180 minus 2y since x is equal to y you can write 180 minus 2x and that is same as 180 minus 2y so both of these angle have same measurement that means we can conclude that angle a b c is equal with angle b c d so alternate interior angles are same now these two are x since x and y are same these two alternate interior angles also are same so that you can conclude that the incident light ray ab and the reflected light ray cd are parallel each other hence we can prove it Thank you.